Hello my schoolers, welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra and in this video we are going to be solving the past question for the subject government year 2010. So please stay with us, don't go anywhere and we'll be right back. to my school channel so in this video section we are going to be tackling question 1 to 20 now let's jump right into question 1 so nation state is synonymous with dash option a self actualization option b liberation option c sovereignty option d nationalism so the answer to this question is option c sovereignty now when we talk about a state we know that a state exists where there is a group of people there's a territory there is governance and sovereignty but when we talk about nation we're talking about nationality we're talking about oh the feeling of oneness okay among a group of people okay so nation state combines the two futures so it is bounded not just by nationality but also bounded by sovereignty so the answer to this question is option c sovereignty so option c is the final answer to this question question two a fundamental component of political culture is that option a social value option b community structure option b family value option d economic values the answer to this question is social values when we talk about social values social values are a set of principle or moral principle that's generally accepted by the society, right? And when, how do we define political culture? Political culture is the belief, the attitude, the values of political system that can be found among members of a political um, community or that is well shared amongst the members of a political community. Or we could just say generally that political culture is the way people behave during political activities. For example, during voting, what's our attitude, what's our belief, how do we do it? Okay, so all of this starts with the society. The society will find ourselves, okay, this is what is acceptable in the society. Okay, social value is the answer to this question because it is the fundamental component of political culture. Option A is therefore the final answer to this question. Question 3. A form of oligarchy in which gifted people are the helm of affairs is dash. Option A, aristocracy. Option B, plutocracy. Option C, theocracy. Option D, gerontocracy. So the answer to this question is aristocracy. So aristocracy is government by the noble. Plutocracy is government by the wealthy. Theocracy is government by God or gods. Gerontocracy is government by the old people. Okay, so aristocracy government by the noble, people with honorable titles, people belonging to a higher rank. So option A is definitely the answer to this question. Question four, a state that is ruled by an elected citizen is dash. Option A, a monarchy. Option B, a republic. Option C, a plutocracy. Option D, an empire. The answer to this question is a republic. A republic is a state in which the president is elected by the citizen. Okay, so option B is the final answer to this question. Question five. A true democracy in the modern sense exists where the dash. Option A, elected representatives rule. Option B, majority of the people vote. Option C, majority of the people rule. Option D, elite rule. The answer to this question is definitely option A, elected representative rule. Now, democracy is a system in which the people can exercise their governing powers either directly, that is by themselves, or through a representative, that is through electing a representative. Now, do not forget the question says, in a modern sense, a true democracy is what? There are two types of democracy, there's a direct democracy and indirect democracy. So in the modern sense, what we use is the indirect democracy in which we elect our representative. So the direct democracy is used in villages or in small communities where people will just gather to discuss about political issues, about the community and all of that. But the indirect democracy, which is true representative, is what is practiced in the modern sense. And so option A is the final answer to this question. Question six, 
in a parliamentary system, when the legislature passes a vote of no confidence on the executive, it means that the dash, option A, executive is expected to go on suspension, option B, executive is required to resign, option C, legislature ceases to trust the executive, option D, legislature commences legal proceeding against the executive. The answer to this question is definitely option B, executive is required to resign. So one of the demerits of the parliamentary system of government is the fact that the executive can be removed any time the vote of no confidence is passed, okay? It means that the executive has to resign. So the answer to this question is definitely option B. Question seven. The legislative body of the United States of America is the dash. Option A, Parliament. Option B, Congress. Option C, National Assembly. Option D, Council. The answer to this question is definitely option B. So the Constitution of the United States of America divides federal government into three, which is the legislative, the executive, and also the judiciary. But then the legislative is called the Congress, where we have the House of Representative and the House of Senate. But then in Nigeria, we call the Legislative National Assembly also, which comprises of the House of Rep and Senate. But for the United States of America, it is called Congress. So option B is the final answer to this question. Do not forget that you can take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT pass questions. All you need to do is you click on the link in the description below, which takes you to the My School website. There you have to download the My School app for your Android phones and then my school software for your computers and laptops. Please go ahead and download and start practicing for your upcoming examination. Now moving on to question eight. The upper house in most federal system is created to dash, option A, ensure equality of federating units, option B, oversee and check the lower house, option C, prevent excesses of the executive, option D, enable experience elders make imputes to governance. So the answer to this question is option C, prevent excesses of executive. Now let's talk about the upper house. The upper house is equivalent to Nigeria's or the United States House of Senate. Okay, and the upper house is also related to the United Kingdom's House of Lords. Okay, so for the United Kingdom, the legislative body is called Parliament as opposed to Nigeria, which calls it National Assembly, and United States, which calls it Congress. But for Nigeria and United States of America, we have the House of Rep and the House of Senate. But for the United Kingdom, we have House of Lords and House of Commons. So the House of Lords is equivalent, is what we call the upper house, okay? Why the House of Commons is the lower house. And for Nigeria and United States, the equivalent for the upper house is the House of Senate. So what they do is they review, they examine carefully, thoroughly the activities of the executive to ensure that all of their actions are accountable, okay? So the answer to this question is definitely prevent excesses of the executive. Option C is the final answer to this question. I believe you are enjoying this content. If yes, do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 9. In which of the following systems is the power of the component unit more than that of the central government? Option A, monarchical. Option B, unitary. Option C, federal. Option D, Confederal. The answer to this question is definitely Confederal. Now, what is Confederal system? A Confederal system is the association of countries coming together for a particular purpose. Okay, so each of these countries are component units, and they are they are stronger than the association itself because they can choose to withdraw whenever they like. So they are self-governing, and they can choose to do whatever it is they want to do, and that is why they are stronger as a component unit than the association itself, which is the central government, okay? So the answer to this question is definitely option D, confederal. Question 10. One of the general tenets of fascist doctrine is that a leader is dash. Option A, supreme relative to the constitution. Option B, subordinate to the laws of the states. Option C, weak relative to the constitution. Option D, subordinate to the norms of the society? The answer to this question is definitely option A, supreme relative to the constitution because we are talking about fascism. Fascism is a system of government 
by a dictator. So it's a system of government that is ruled by a dictator, and this dictator controls the lives of the people. You know, they are not allowed to disagree with anything or anything he says. Okay, so that is their doctrine as regards a leader or what a leader should be. So the, this person is supreme relative to the constitution. That is, just as the constitution is supreme. So is the leader also, okay? Subordinates will mean lower in rank. So no, the leaders are not lower in rank. They are not lesser, okay? They are supreme, just as the constitution is. So the answer to this question is definitely option A. Question 11. In a cabinet system of government, executive power is exercised by the dash. Now, in a cabinet system of government, the head of state is different from the head of government. The head of state is the king or the queen, while the head of government is usually the prime minister who exercises executive function. Okay, so the answer to this question is definitely option A, head of government. Question 12. The principle of separation of powers is best practiced in the dash. Option A, presidential system. Option B, monarchical system. Option C, parliamentary system, option D, feudal system. The answer to this question is presidential system. So, presidential system features the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. Monarchical system is the government ruled by the king or queen. Parliamentary system, we know that the head of state is different from the head of government. The feudal system is one where the workers or peasants receive lands in return for their service to the king. Okay? So the answer to this question is definitely presidential system because we know that powers are separated amongst the legislative, the executive and judiciary to ensure that there is effective performance of each of these organs of government. So the answer to this question is definitely option A. Question 13. A typical form of delegated legislation is that. Now, delegated legislation is the law delegated to another person to make, to authorize, to enforce, to interpret. Okay? And a typical form of this is a bylaw. A bylaw is a law that is made by local government or local corporations. Okay, on various subject matter, it could be the market, it could be car parks, it could be utilities. Okay, so the answer to this question is option. D, a bylaw. Question 14. The rights of a citizen can be withdrawn by the state if the person dies. The answer to this question is option B. So if a person is found guilty of a particular crime, a serious crime, or is convicted of that crime, the person's rights can be withdrawn. Okay, so the answer to this question is option B. Question 15. An electoral process in which candidates are selected for elective offices by party member is dash. The answer to this question is primary election. For example, in a presidential election, each political party has to select the candidates that will represent the party and that will run for the office of the president. Okay? So the electoral process of selecting those candidates from each of the political parties is what we call primary election. Okay? So the answer to this question is definitely option A. Question 16. In theory, one major advantage of the one-party system is that it's dash. Option A, eliminate intra-party conflict. Option B, promotes greater mass participation in government. Option C, serves as an instrument of national integration. Option D, guarantees social justice. The answer to this question is definitely option C. Now, when we talk about one-party system, it means the recognition of one legal party. And there are so many advantages to this. It prevents economic waste, it prevents unhealthy rivalry, it enables um, fast or quick decision making, okay? But one, uh, one major advantage is the fact that it promotes unity because it embodies different culture, different ethnic group, different religious organization, okay? So it's cut across the ethnic factors or the religious factors, and so it's, it promotes national integration, it promotes national uh, peace, it promotes national unity, okay? And so option C is the final answer to this question. Question 17. A tactic employed by pressure groups to achieve their objective is dash. Option A, memorandum. Option B, propaganda. Option C, electioneering campaign. Option D, lobbying. The answer to this question is lobbying. Now, pressure groups seek to influence government decision, and they do that through lobbying. Lobbying is to seek to influence. So option D is the final answer to this question. 
Do you have questions you would like to ask? You can go ahead and ask your questions by clicking on the link in the description below. It takes you to the MySchool website. There you can ask as many questions as possible and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now moving on to question 18. Public opinion can be measured through dash. Option A, negotiation. Option B, strike action. Option C, referendum. Option D, rumor. The answer to this question is referendum. Referendum is synonymous to public vote. Okay? So this is how it goes. A political question is thrown or is addressed on the media, like social media, and the people are asked certain questions and they get people response. Okay, they get their opinion. So it's more like a direct decision, okay? And so um, there is a general vote and people, we get to know people's preference, we, know, we get to know their choice. So a, a common social media that I get to find this is on Twitter, okay? So referendum, you think of public vote. And so option C is the final answer to this question. Do you have better solution, explanation, or steps to any of this question? Please feel free to share this with us, indicate in the comment section, indicate the question and the solutions you would like to share. Question 19, which of the following is the main function of the civil service? Okay, so option A, implementing government policies, option B, supporting the party in power, option C, allocating resources to the federating units, option D, mobilizing, mobilizing grassroots support for Government. The answer to this question is option A, implementing government policies. Do not forget that the civil service is under the executive arm of government and their main function is to implement government policies. So option A is the final answer to this question. Question 20. Who was the political heir of the old Oyo Empire? Option A, Basharu. Option B, Arema. Option C, Oyo Messi. Option D, Alafi. The answer to this question is Alafi. Alafi is regarded as the political head of the old Oyo Empire. However, Basharu, Basharu is the leader of the Kingsmaker, which is Oyo Messi. Oyo Messi is the seven Kingsmaker with Basharu serving as the head. Then we have Aremo, who was the um, elder son of the ruling Alafi. Okay? So the answer to this question is option D, Alafi. We've come to the end of this segment. I believe it was impactful. Thank you for joining us. Do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.